ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ومن يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتوني الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به وارحمكم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا قولا سليما يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يؤدي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. أما بعد فعل خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحج هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. وشعر الأمور محتفاتها وكل محتفة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. ونعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن النار. الحمد لله. I should excuse me ahead of time. This is never an easy task. This is never an easy task. And anybody who takes it upon himself to believe that they have the right or the responsibility to stand here before the people from the member of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and give warning and admonition and this, that, and the third, may Allah guide you. I come here today to share with you an admonition not just for you but for myself. Being that we're coming out of the month of Ramadan, and this is our second Juma outside of the Yom Kippur, this is, so this is officially the first Juma, I guess you could say, of the month of Shawwal, because we're not having the festivities, even though this is part of the Eid for us. But this is a time where we're actually coming together, and most of us have to go back to work and deal with the family. So I humbly that. But I came here today to share with you something that I believe can be a benefit to all of us based on understanding and having been able to look over the years at some of the things I hear Muslims say, some of the things I say, some of the things you do, some of the things you don't do. And primarily for dealing with our children. I, some of you know I've had the benefit and the, the, the pleasure to have dealt with some of your children over the last few months. And I have been encouraged by dealing with them, but I've also been troubled. <coughs> and the case in point is, in the next two, the last week of Ramadan, I had the opportunity to sit with some youth for the Kiyam one night, and one of the first questions that was asked to me was, how can you know that the Allah is real, that He exists? Or you have to be from holding these beliefs and, and, and not allowing Allah to manifest all people for us to have some in humanity. This, this, this kind of really, really troubled me that I've heard this from the young people, although I know that this is a conversation that they have quite regularly. And this is a result of part of what I want to talk about. But one of the reasons I bring this up is because I want to try to encourage each one of us, myself included, to Recommit ourselves to doing something today. It's a three-part prescription. Recommit ourselves to having sound demand. And as a result of that, the topic of my talk today, recommitting ourselves to having tawakul, Allah's love. Trust in Allah. Nothing or nothing or no one else but Allah. And as a result of this, the, the end result of what we were supposed to have developed during the month of Ramadan was taqwa. This is what the fashion was prescribed for us for according to Allah in his book. We were supposed to have developed an increased level of taqwa as a result of our fasting. But these things only come about as a result of man, tawakal, and taqwa being part of the end result. A long part of a conversation that we can't have today. But this is what I want to talk about. Allah says in the book, أما سبت أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يأتكم أخذ الذين خلوا من قبلكم. Or did you believe? Did you reckon that you would enter the Jannah and 
not uh, you you and his gender not they come to the life of experience with those before you went through. A part of a lot of what we're dealing with right now, particularly with our young people, is the environment that we have in part manifested for them ourselves as a result of our intentions. All of these things that we're dealing with, we know Allah is the one that does everything. He creates our actions and it's all a result of our intentions, and our mindset, how we look at the world, how we want to go about dealing with things. And it's either a result of common people or the land that Allah allows whatever happens to us to happen. So we always wish to be on the side of common people. But we've also got a sense of uh, almost entitlement to believe that we're Muslims, we go to Jannah, Khalas, there's no problem, there's no wrecking, there's no Yisab, when the day of Yom Kiyam, it's just, we're good. And this is not the case. This is not the case. And even more so, we believe that as a result of being Muslim and we fast and we pray and I pay my zakat and I do this and I do that and I help the next man and I'm always thinking of the next person, I have a smile on my face. We think that we're not supposed to have no types of hardship or difficulty. This is not true. It's the relay from our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the love of Allah manifests through him giving his slave trials and tribulations. This is a reality for us. And the second part of this ayah, and they were touched with tribulations and harm. And they were shaken. You could say shaken down to their core. The very soul was troubled. It was mutarum from the experiences, the difficulties, and they caught they created such the songs with the inside of them, they were shaken to their core. Until the messenger, and those who believe that were with him. We're not talking about the Prophet and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was revealed to give the Prophet encouragement during a time of fear when they were going through some things. But again, to the point where a messenger of Allah and his people were shaken to their core to the point where they asked the question, Method of Allah. When will the help of the law come? Where is the help of the law? And this is not as a result, don't get the wrong idea, of them not having to walk with, which we're talking about today. But this is a result of them having the utmost to walk with and knowing that the law gave them a promise that he would help them, but it came to the point where they were so shaken and so disturbed by all the affliction that they had to deal with that they had to ask the question, oh, okay, when is this going to happen? We're waiting. And I don't believe Anybody on this Mosello will ever believe that they have more trials and tribulations and hardships than any of Allah's messages, particularly our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's impossible for you to think or even believe or even have the types of trials and tribulations that he had to go through. What we're dealing with does not compare. But as a result of this, we have capitulated to a certain degree, to a point where oftentimes Muslim men in particular, when we're out in the world, we don't even represent ourselves as Muslims. If we don't tell the people that we work with or people in our community don't see us maybe dressing from time to time in particular our clothing or any other thing or just saying that we're Muslim, most people don't know. Our women have it harder than we do. Because for the most part, the majority of our women wear the jab. So they're seen every day. But that's again, that's another topic. We're not going to get into that discussion right there. But the point is, we feel that, oh, these people say this, these people don't like Muslims, they don't do this. It was never supposed to be a party where we were the life of the party. We were never supposed to be the most liked people on the planet. That wasn't our job to do this. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had people in his own family who hated him as a result of him bringing his message. Most of us were born Muslim. I'm a convert. I 
Alhamdulillah, the Barakallah, all this will be 14 years I've been Muslim. And during that time, I have been constantly amazed at the fact that our belief or our, our professed belief has always been tempered by what we gain in this dunya. That's kind of disturbing for me. Allah talks about it in the Quran. He says when things are good, you're happy. When things are bad, you feel as if the law has abandoned you and left you to your own devices and you give up and you run around in despair. Yes. Which is haram for us. But a lot of us, as a result of lack of Iman, therefore no tawakal, therefore no taqwa, we have this sense of despair that has allowed us to, unfortunately, have children and even sometimes our own selves ask these types of questions about how do we know if the law exists? Think about that. Again, as a convert, this disturbs me. Because another thing one of the young people asked me the other night was, what made me accept Dean? And alhamdulillah, it wasn't that I heard that man or somebody reciting the ayah for Quran and I was uplifted and I felt so good. I saw the Muslims doing all these wonderful things and I wanted to be a part of it. I grew up around Muslims. And if it was up to us being the reason for people coming into the deen, the behavior that I saw from the Muslims was at times worse than mine. The Muslims I grew up around, even though they fasted and prayed and did what they were supposed to do on the outside, they had some very corrupt character and behavior. I would have never become Muslim if it was me dealing just with the Muslims and what they represented and what I saw. It would have never happened. The Lord knows best. <clears throat> What got me to grab onto this dean and believe in this dean, although I knew it was true, I just had other issues that I was dealing with on the personal level, was hot. Nothing more. Hot. This is the truth. I know it is. Like the Kufar used to tell Rasul, if you send the philosopher down the stairs with gold and silver and do this and do that, then you will believe. I didn't need none of that. I knew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the messenger of God. I knew God was real. I knew I didn't come from a monkey. I know this universe didn't just explode out of nothing and created itself. I knew that this was the truth. If you read the Bible, I come from a Christian family. I knew that Jesus was not the son of God because it says so in the Bible. But we have a very creative way of reading things and allowing the mean to say what we wanted to say. Even to the point where we have some Muslims that do this nowadays. And we have opinions and beliefs that are strange, ajib. But the vast majority of this comes as a result of, again, lack of Iman. You don't really believe what you say you believe. Not everybody. You're not accusing anybody of nothing here. So please don't get the wrong idea what I'm up there trying to say. But a man comes as a result of having a sound understanding of what it is you're supposed to believe in, what is necessary for a law, what is possible for a law, and what is impossible for a law. Most of us don't know this. We need to learn these things. This is the first line of defense in being able to stand upright as a Muslim and have an Iman. And as a result of knowing these things and believing in them, then we can <coughs> trust in the law because we know this is hot. This is true. So I don't need anybody or anything to validate hot for me. Why does the law have to prove himself to me? Who am I? But this is the attitude a lot of us have. Oh Allah, if you give me this money and do this for me, I will do this. And I will spend this money and I'll go to Hajj and I'll build a masjid and I'll help the people and I'll do this and I do this. And oh Lord, just please give me money so I can take care of my family and this, that, and the third. Um, there's a story of one of the companions, he asked the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ask the Lord to give him wealth. 
and a lot of the rest of the velocity of time told him no, he should be better if you left that alone. But he insisted. And the Rasul made the, the dua after him. And when it was time for him to pay the zakat, he didn't do it. This was what he promised, but he didn't do it. And it went on for a while, and after a period of time, he tried to come back. I believe I had to reveal about him, and then he tried to come back and give the money for the cat, and Rasul refused to take it. He condemned himself to the hellfire as a result of his actions. Well, he had to get up. So, okay, I said all this, but there's, there's some prescriptions for this. It takes a time for us to get to it. There's a prescription. There's something that all of us can do. Like I said, this is a challenge. This is something I want all of us to engage in as we're going forward into this time period where the next Ramadan comes up. And one Ramadan to the next, you fast and say it for the sake of the law, you do what we're supposed to do. This is an expiation for our sins. We have, inshallah, all of us are standing before Allah, I guess you could say 95% sin free. Because we all do, so we're not going to get into that. That's another discussion. But there's a tradition of Rasul Sallallahu from Sa'ad. And he said, Allah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Min Sa'adati ibn Ridahu bima Allah. This is part of a long hadith. I'm going to uh, give you another hadith after this. is two of them. This is the first part of the first hadith. And Sa'ad said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, from the Sa'adah, the, from the, some people always normally say the felicity from the, from the glad tidings, we'll say from the prosperity, from the prosperous nature of the son of Adam. Ridah hubi Allah Is that he is pleased with what Allah has decreed for him. Not to be confused with the Qadr. We're talking about the Qadr right now. Like the Qadr, the judge. You come before the judge, you've done something wrong, you're asking for some recompense for something someone did to you. The Qadi makes a decree, gives a declaration of judgment. This is from the, the, the Qadda of Allah. Based on our Qadr, Allah knew that we would do certain things, and this was already written for us, but there was also the other part, Allah manifesting certain things in our life. So as a result of our intentions, we want to do certain things, Allah gives us tawfiq, He allows it to happen and to our benefit, when he gives us his land, it happens to our detriment, one of the two. But it was then that we are in a state of resolve. Resolve who be mad, come to Allah for that. He is pleased with what Allah has decreed for him. This is from the, the felicity nature, from the prosperous state of the, the, the son of Adam. Now we have the second hadith. So that's the first part of the first, this is from the second. From Shihab, or excuse me, from Suhaid, where the Lord is. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عجب لي أمر المؤمن للمؤمن إن أمره كله له خير وليس ذلك لأحد إلا للمؤمن. Astonishing, amazing. Is it from the affairs of the believer? Surely all of his affair is good. And this is for no one except the mu'min, the one who believes. The one who believes. The mu'min. We are so much food. And if he is struck with something, okay, we'll go back to the word prosperous again. Prosperous, uh, if he's struck with something that is uh, wondrous for him, uh, something that gives him prosperous, any good thing that could happen to him. If he's struck with this, shakara. Shakara Shakara Khairula. And he's grateful. Alhamdulillah. Shukrulillah. We show and give thanks to Allah for this. If somebody does something for us, we thank them. We're, we're grateful to them as well. There's also the, the tradition of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Man, I just put an ass, man, I just put a The one who just thank, thank the people is not thank the law. 
for somebody that does something for me, show gratitude. This is the first way that we get to you know, attain Allah's pleasure with us being thankful to Him and grateful. So, again, going back to the first one, the Sa'ada, from the felicitous nature of the son of Adam, is his being, be Mephadol, be Mephadol Allahu, left. Being pleased with Allah's decree for him. Back to the second. Okay? This is our deep thing for us. Good this happens to us, we're thankful. Alhamdulillah. We give thanks and shukr to Allah. And this is good for us. But what else? Where I saw that who? Dorahu. Sabra again khayrullah. And if some type of harm comes to us, we have something. We're patient. We don't cry and give up. No, this couldn't be real. Allah wouldn't do this to me. Why is this happening to me? You know, our scholars tell us when you ask that question, you should be very careful. You need to make thought instantly. Because holding on to that type of understanding, questioning Allah in his color and his color, it leaves you in a state of kufr. Despair leaves you in a state of kufr. Be very careful when these things come out your mouth. We've all heard somebody say this, whether it's in our family, or we say it. At one point in time, all of us have slipped and done it. Make power. It's a serious thing. But when the raw, when harm comes to us, for the movement, suffer if again the And he's patient. This is good for him. Ajib, the movement. Ajib, just for the movement. Nobody else. Nobody else benefits from this but the movement. But what is all this? Why am I talking about this? Because all of this shows the wakul. We trusted in Allah. We know for a fact, good or bad, whatever's happening to us, alhamdulillah. Allah Akbar. <coughs> if we remember, Rasul said, What's the time one day told the Hidden Abbas, the Raven of Abu Mak, when he was riding behind him on the camel one day? If the entire world got together to do something to you that Allah had not decreed for you, they would not be able to do it. If the entire U.S. government, the government of England, the Canada, and this and that, all of them got together and did whatever they tried to do, whatever they wanted to do to harm or obliterate the traces of the Muslims, they couldn't do it if this is not something that Allah decreed for. What are you worrying about? Yes, there's a, a conference that looks up for those of us who may not have that strong internal nature to be able to withstand some type of hardship and oppression that people may put on you, so you have the opportunity to be a little flexible in how you present yourself to people to save yourself from their harms and their abuse. But, what are you worried about? So, go back to the second part of the first sentence. وَمِنْ شِقَاوَةٍ إِنْ مَعَادَمَا تَرْكُهُ إِسْتِحَارَةُ اللَّهِ وَمِنْ شِقَاوَةٍ إِنْ مَعَادَمَا سَخَطُهُ إِنْ مَا قَضَى اللَّهِ لَهِ Okay, this is the remedy. This is a problem, but there's also a remedy within the problem. فَإِلَى مَعَا لُسْرِي So surely we're letting difficulty there to me. Allah, the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is telling us about the shikawa for the wretchedness of the son of Adam. For the wretched state of the son of Adam, Tarakuhu is the heart of the law. Leaving is the heart of the law. Leaving turning to Allah and asking him to give preference to what's best for you. All of us are familiar with dua, uh, Salat is the heart of the dua, but this is a part of how we remember this. And this is a part of the reason why a lot of us are in the state that we're in. Because we choose to do what we want to do instead of allowing Allah to manifest in our lives what's best for us. Whether we like it or not, you may hate a thing that's good for you. You may like a thing that's bad for you. So, within that shikar, and also, there's two things he gave. For the shikar of the son of Adam is leaving his shikar. And for the shikar of the son of Adam is sukhutu, being displeased with the Allah of Allah, what Allah has decreed for him. It leaves you in a wretched state. Wretched state. We see wretched in the darkness. 
فاستغفر الله العظيم وليه لكم ولجاله المسلمين واستغفره إله هو غفور رحيم الحمد لله الذي انزل عبده الكتاب ولم يجد ولم يجد له عوجا. الحمد لله رب العالمين. ورب الصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى اله المسلمين والحرم والقوات بكتب الله العظيم الامين. So, okay, we left this before. Why? Some of us leave it because again we have no trust and belief that the lost son of God will answer our duas. Some of us may have asked for something and did not get what we asked for. And being that we were in such a state of in delusion, thinking that we were entitled for a lot to answer our du'as because I fasted all this month. I woke up every morning, ate some wood. I made my prayers on time. I was in the master every night for thought of week. Why hasn't the Lord given me what I asked for? The due date was passed. I needed the money last week and I didn't get it. Ungrateful. But what else has happened? That's for you to answer for yourself if you're one of the people who had this question, this problem. Think of all the blessings that the Lord has given to you. Oftentimes we ask for things and the Lord averts it from us because He knows it will lead to no good for us in the long run. We really thought about that. The one who asked the message of the Lord, so they were selling. That's the Lord to give him wealth. And he couldn't keep his word. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the Quran again. وَإِذَا سَهَلَّكَ الْبَارِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيمٌ And when my servant asks you about me, then surely I am near and close. فأجبوا دعوة الداعي إذا دعاني. I respond to the supplication of the supplicant, the one who calls on me, إذا دعاني. When he calls me, when he asks of me. Going back to the istikhara from the hadith we just said before we did. This has come from the shikawa of the abd, is that he leaves istikhara to Allah. I do this so you don't ask for nothing, you just get up. One thing you have to remember, we can go out and we can work seven days a week, hundred dollars a week. You will not get one penny more than what Allah has already agreed for you. If you stood on the street corner and sold fruits and vegetables for the rest of your life, you will get every penny that Allah has agreed for you. Not one cent less, not one cent more. And there's nothing, no one or no one can, nothing or no one can do anything to stop you from getting it. Back to our children. Yes, we want our children to have good education, want them to be well off and be able to take care of themselves, have a good family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if we're fortunate to be these things at the, at the state of foregoing them learning their father, I ain't. Foregoing them getting up in the morning for hundred. Or going them going to bed with a shot. Even going so far as to have had people to give some type of opinion, and we're not questioning opinions of scholars, but we give, we give opinions where people say that because a child is, or because a young person is going to school and they have to take a test, if they're mukallif, if they're of the responsible age, but they have to pray, fast and pray, then they don't have to do it. <laughs> and unfortunately, everybody in there knows someone who has taken to that opinion. Unfortunately. You may hate a thing, it's good for you. You may love something, it's bad for you. To welcome. To welcome wouldn't allow you to make those types of decisions. To welcome would not allow us to make those types of decisions. So, very short du'a, 
show the form of this the father. We're in the car, we're at work, we're at the desk, we can't stop to make the two rakas and do some of the Sunni Mustahabs of actually going through the process of this the father. What do we say? Allahumma khairi, Allahumma khairi, wakhtarli, falla takilni illa ishtiyari. Allahumma khairi, wakhtarli, falla takilni illa ishtiyari. Allahumma khairi, wakhtarli, falla takilni illa ishtiyari. O oh Allah, uh, choose for me what is best for me, and do not leave me to choose for myself. Allah is al Kareem. He's generous. He gives his faith. He, he wants his faith for service and, and, and sincerity. Allah is al He knows what you're going through. He watches, he is observant. Allah is Al-Mujib. He responds to you when he acts. <coughs> Allah is Al-Rasa. His, 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 his mercy and his love and his everything that he encompasses, he expands, is, is encompassing of everything in creation through knowledge and understanding and a number of other things. Nothing after He doesn't surround the creation with his body and anything like that. Well, yeah, that's not what we're talking about. Allah is al hakim He's wise. He gives you what you need. Sometimes he gives you what you want, but he more or less gives you what you need. And now Allah is al Madud. He troubles you sometimes because he loves you. Because what happens after this here? For all the harms and the troubles and tribulations we go through, this is a form of purification from our sins. The hadith goes that. We go through so many trials and tribulations to the point where we meet Allah and it's like we never committed any sin in our life. <coughs> Allah <Allahu> Akbar. <coughs> Inshallah, I hope I have not offended anybody today. I understand that sometimes people can come up here and they can say things and they rub some people the wrong way. They can point the fingers, but I'm not. I need this just, just as much as everybody else. So, Husikum. Usikum, usikum wa nafsi bitokolo. Usikum wa nafsi bitokolo. Usikum wa nafsi bitokolo. I advise myself and I advise all of you to have tokolo. In the law, have the man when the man you can't move your saloon, Alim Nabi. Yeah, you let in the armor, Sulu Alayhi was sent to the sea. Allahu Akbar, 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 Grant you the ability to cultivate, maintain, and hold fast to taqwa, to wakil. And may, may he make all of us people taqwa. Stop it off. Stop it off. I'll keep it